It's almost midnight on a special evening in February 1424, about to become the Chinese New Year 4061. In the capital city of Beijing, a girl named Lin has been celebrating her family's most important holiday. Dear Journal, Happy New Year! Let me tell you what's been happening. First, we had a huge feast with so many of my favorite things to eat. Then we gave offerings to our ancestors, plums for long life, peonies for good fortune, and lotus blossoms for abundance. This is how we thank the ancestors for their wisdom and guidance and pray for good fortune in the year ahead. We always place the offerings on our altar under my favorite painting. Mother says the painting represents the three paths of faith that make our culture strong. Each faith started with the ideas of a special person who lived long ago. First, there was Confucius. He was a wise man who lived almost 2,000 years before my time, during a difficult period in our history. No one could get along. People were fighting and stealing from each other all the time. Confucius said that people needed to treat each other kindly. He also said that a good and honorable government was the key to peace and happiness. Respect was very important to Confucius. He told everyone to respect their elders and the government officials who had the responsibility to lead our country well. The Analects is a famous book of his sayings. Father is helping me read it. Here's one I really like. Do not treat other people the way you don't want to be treated. I think that's really good advice, don't you? Mother really admires Lao Tzu, who was another wise man who lived around the time of Confucius. His most well-known book is the Tao Te Ching, or the Book of the Way. The Tao tells us that the way of nature, not government, is the path to happiness. Lao Tzu says that by watching nature, we can see how the different elements of the world work together in harmony. Mother says it's sort of like how the yin and yang symbol shows us balance. Yin means dark, and yang means light. The symbol reminds us that our planet needs both earth and sky, rain and sunshine, soaring mountains and flowing rivers. Mother says this balance of opposites makes our world whole. She is always quoting from the Tao. One of her favorite sayings is, a journey of a thousand miles begins with just a single step. Usually she says that when she's trying to get my brothers to clean their room. Our third great thinker was Siddhartha Gautama, also known as the Buddha, or Enlightened One. He lived in the country of India, but traders brought his teachings to China on the Silk Road. The Buddha taught that all unhappiness was caused by desire or wanting things. He said that if we could live a good, simple life and think calmly, we could achieve extreme happiness, which he called nirvana. He is often shown sitting peacefully on a lotus pad, like this. That's why I like having lotus blossoms in our house. They remind me to think peacefully. Of course, sometimes that's a little bit difficult around here. My brothers are obsessed with Kung Fu. Mother says someday she thinks she's living in the middle of a Shaolin monastery. Father tells me that a monastery is a religious place where men live together and practice their faith. The Shaolin Monastery in central China is where Kung Fu, a fighting technique, was developed a very long time ago. At the time, there was a lot of fighting in the world. The monks of Shaolin decided that to preserve peace, they should be strong. Boys from all over China come here to learn from the Kung Fu masters. Not everyone will make it. It takes years of practice and discipline. 
The students have to listen to their teachers all the time, and they must live a simple and good life. Most importantly, Kung Fu should never be used to start a fight. It's only for being strong to help stop people from doing bad things. Father says the monks practice all the time. They have trained to do amazing things. I think it's really neat that we Chinese have developed such a peaceful yet powerful way to be strong. Mother says we've invented something else that's really strong. And it's beautiful. Silk is one of the most important Chinese inventions of all time. It's a very strong thread and it makes beautiful clothing that we love to wear. Silk is also one of the main products that has made China strong because it has made us rich. According to mother, silk was discovered by a woman. The story is that thousands of years before now, even before the time of the Shang, the Empress Sealing Ji discovered how to unwind silkworm cocoons and turn the thread into silk. Soon, women all over China were raising silkworms. Everyone who saw our silk fabric wanted to have some of their own. They tried to figure out how we made silk, but we kept it a secret. And everyone had to buy it from us. People as far away as Rome, that's another place more than 5,000 miles from here, wanted Chinese silk. So we sold it to them. It was a long and dangerous journey for our traders to take the silk to the west. Once they left the protection of our Great Wall, they were on their own. They had to worry about bandits stealing the silk. And they had to cross the Takli Makan Desert. Father says that people called it the go in and you won't come out desert. I don't think I want to make that trip. But our country grew very rich selling silk. We're growing rich selling other things as well. These days, everyone is talking about our famous Ming porcelain. Porcelain is a hard ceramic made from a fine white clay. We've been making it for years and years. It takes a super hot oven to fire porcelain. Father says that no one else besides the Chinese has figured out how to do this. So porcelain is another thing that people from other countries buy from us. We Chinese have a lot of great ideas. Mother says I'm bragging when I say that. I'm just proud. Paper is another nifty Chinese invention. In the old days, people made it really thick and used it for blankets, clothes, and even shoes. I bet you wouldn't want to wear any of those things in a rainstorm. Today we wear silk and make paper just for writing. Here's how we make it. First, we chop down a bunch of bamboo, dry it, and cut it into chips. Then, we steam the chips until they are soft and grind them again and again until we have a smooth pulp. Next, we use fine screens to lift a layer of pulp out of the water. When the pulp layer dries, it's paper, just like that. It's a lot easier to work with than the oracle bones and bamboo rolls that we used to use. And that's not all. We invented woodblock prints, a fast and easy way to make a lot of copies of one thing. Before woodblocks, people would have to copy everything over by hand. My fingers hurt just thinking about it. Now we can print books much more quickly and easily. It's a great way to share information and ideas. And we have so many good ideas to share.
We Chinese are always thinking of new and better ways to do things. Take the plow for example. Father says a lot of farmers around the world use a plow, but we made it better. For one thing, we had the idea to make it out of cast iron, a strong metal mixture that is easy to pour into molds. This meant we can make many plows in a short period of time. And look here, this neat thing is called a mold board. It helped our farmers turn the dirt with less effort. So they were able to grow much more food, which helped our ancestors eat well and grow strong. We still use our plows today. In the south, we grow mostly rice. And in the north, we grow a lot of wheat. One of my favorite foods is made from wheat. Noodles. My people have been making noodles for thousands of years. We cook them in broth or serve them with vegetables. Wow, this list of inventions is really interesting. Kung Fu, silk, porcelain, paper, cast iron plow, noodles. What else have we invented? Oh yes, the compass. Our compass is made of brass. Mother says the marker is lodestone, which is a magnetic mineral. The handle of the marker always points to the south. We invented the compass to help us align our buildings properly. It all started with the emperor and his advisors. Since the emperor is the most important man in the room, we say he shines like the North Star. We think that it's important for people to face directly north when speaking to the emperor, to show proper respect. So our buildings are aligned on an exact north-south axis. For a long time, we only used compasses to orient our buildings. But then someone had the idea to take them on ships. Now, sailors always know what direction they are sailing even if the skies are cloudy and they can't see the stars. It's getting pretty late, but there's one more invention I have to mention tonight because it's important to our New Year celebrations. Gunpowder. Believe it or not, gunpowder was invented by accident. Father says alchemists were actually looking for a way to turn things into gold. Mother says doctors were looking for a potion for long life. I think they're both right. Our people experimented for hundreds of years until one day when someone mixed together sulfur, saltpeter, and charcoal. The mixture created bright sparks, the very first fireworks. This is my most favorite invention. Father says that gunpowder has also changed the way we fight our wars. I think it's kind of odd that something as beautiful as fireworks is also used for fighting. My brothers don't think about things like that too much. They just want to make a lot of noise. It's nearly midnight, so we have to stop writing soon and get ready to celebrate. We're entering the year of the dragon. Our dragons may look a little scary, but in China, they are considered good and friendly. They are a huge part of our celebrations and stories. Come to think of it, dragons are a very good symbol for China. They are big, just like my country. They are strong, and we think they're beautiful. They are friendly, but they can be fierce warriors if threatened. And they are a powerful, creative force, just like our thinkers and inventors. Oh my gosh, it's nearly midnight. I've had so much fun writing all about my country. I'm really proud to be Chinese, and I can't wait to see what new things we'll discover in the year ahead. I promise I'll write all about them. Bye for now.